Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your processes, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Webs Design, just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going, Matt? It is going well, man. Okay, so we're going to be talking about uh, e-commerce today, and I am excited. I used to be terrified of this, which I'm sure many people out there are, but there's really no reason to be, and Adam here is going to talk it out with everybody. Yeah, I'm excited too. You, uh, we, we've had we've talked to Adam before when he first released Cart Flows, but we hadn't had him here for like a real uh, solid episode. So I'm glad. Uh, most of you probably already know him because you're probably one of his 100,000 plus YouTube subscribers to his WP Crafter channel. And uh, Adam and I actually connected through that channel when I first started uh, doing WordPress work. So he's been a huge help to me and, and done a whole lot of good for my business. So I'm excited to have him here. But before we dive in, and say hello to Adam. We do have a quick word from today's show sponsor. Today's show is sponsored by Termageddon. Termageddon is a privacy policy generator that automatically updates as the laws change so you can keep yourself protected from costly lawsuits. Termageddon partners with agencies by providing them a free set of policies for their own agency website. All that they ask in return is that if you like their service, you recommend it to your clients. But the best part is they'll give you a commission for every one of your referrals. Register at termageddon.com for your free agency account. That's termageddon.com. All right, Adam, thank you so much for joining us today. We're absolutely excited to have you here. How is it going today? It's going fantastic. You know, it's uh, not June yet, but we're in major June gloom here in California. Uh, oh, no. That's, uh, is that just a California phrase or is that everywhere? June gloom. I've never heard it before. I'm in yeah, New I England. think that must be it's California. It's kind of gloomy here all the time. Oh, gotcha. Two so you, of good weather. <laughs> <laughs> so you understand what this So we, we usually call it June gloom. It's very gloomy, uh, but it's early this year. So we actually had rain the other day, literally, which is not California at all. So, uh, but it, things are going great. And thanks for inviting me back on. And you're right, Kyle. Um, I, I haven't been on for like a normal purpose like this. And uh, just for the audience, Kyle's the only guy that I've met on the, you know, like an internet friend, right? He's my yeah. internet friend uh, who sends Christmas cards every year of him and his kids, beautiful kids. So uh, thanks for having me on, Kyle. I feel like I know you, but we've never met. It's either a nice thing I do or a really weird thing I do. So we'll just leave it at that. No, I think that's classy. <laughs> Actually putting something in the mail, not the email, the right. mail. Well, you've helped me out a ton and help uh, really help jumpstart my business. I mean, I think most of the people in these communities, uh, we're here and like have a viable business because there's this online community that supports us and helps us like fast track our business where we couldn't do this on our own. And you've been a huge part of that for my business and literally like a hundred thousand other people. So it's uh, it's amazing the work you do. But for Thank those you. for those few that might not be familiar with you, let's go ahead and get a little bit of background on Adam and, and tell us kind of what you're up to and how you found yourself here on the admin bar today. Well, a lot of folks know me from my YouTube channel, uh, WP Crafter. Uh, so you can just go to youtube.com slash WP Crafter. Got to drop the channel. Uh, Do it. Absolutely. Uh, but it, <laughs> it actually just started out as me making a couple uh, tutorial videos. I was really intrigued with YouTube and making videos and, and all of that kind of stuff. And I just went for it. Uh, kind of like uh, you guys one day decided to build this admin bar uh, video series community and all of that. And you might not realize this, but you guys get shout outs outside of the internet world. Yeah. It's I pretty was, phenomenal. It's weird, huh? Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, there was an orange County word camp. You know, they have the word camps are all around the world. Everyone should at least go to one. Uh, you don't have to go every year. Just go to at least one. Uh, and I was at the orange County one and Beth, Livingston from WP Roadmaps was there speaking and she just kept talking on and on about how everybody needs to join this group in the room and uh, it's just the, the there's so much value in the information there uh, so what you guys are doing reaches far beyond what you guys realize and actually the same goes for me what started out as just a couple 
videos on YouTube, no real plan or intention, no intention of really anything other than, hey, this seems like a neat activity. Next thing you know, if you stick through, uh, stick with it, it ends up blossoming and growing into being something that really benefits and helps a lot of people and also yourself, you know, building a community around you, your talents, your expertise, uh, and who you are. And so fast forward, that was 2014, fast forward to today, five years later, it's a pretty awesome community. It's one of the largest YouTube channels around WordPress. And uh, it's, it's a blast. It's a blast. It's a blessing. It's a blessing for oh, sure. sure. Yeah, it's got to feel real good. It does. When I hear stories of people that take the time to share, they learned something, they implemented it, and now their life is forever changed. It's awesome. Yeah. And of course, I've always had a special friendship with uh, Kyle in the sense that I trust him. <laughs> and so over the years, if someone has asked me for some project work, or whatever, I, I'm focused on the videos only. I might send that out to Kyle because I know Kyle will nail it and do a great job. And those are great things to hear, too, uh, getting uh, emails from people that Kyle did some amazing thing for uh, to get those to come back. Yes. So. You know, you didn't know this, but tomorrow's my birthday and I feel like you're showering me with gifts today. So thank oh. you. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. I, I appreciate that. I, uh, I've, I've enjoyed doing all that and it is amazing how the, these communities work offline too. And I know what you're talking about when Beth, when Beth did that, I noticed something was going on cause I started getting all these join requests in the groups. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's amazing, you know, with Lee's event that he did uh, in the UK earlier this year, just all those people connecting offline. I think that's really cool, too. And I, I look forward to uh, Matt's coming back down for WordCamp here in DFW. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. So if there's anybody near Dallas, Fort Worth, come hang out with us. Heck yeah. yeah, you should uh, do a meetup, uh, announce it. Guys go out at, uh, you know, there's that middle period. I don't know how you guys do yours, but here yeah. it's word camp and then there's like a three hour gap and then there's a night party that three hour gap is perfect for like a, a meetup which i actually did two year two word camps yeah. ago mm -hmm. i did a meetup and i was blown away there was people that came from all over the world to, to go there for the meetup and it was fantastic uh, awesome. uh it's just uh, uh really humbling in fact at this word camp it was crazy i did a live video two weeks prior to the word camp and this guy, Luis, he saw it and he wanted to ask me some questions. And he saw that and he's like, well, I live like 10 minutes from it. <laughs> so he immediately bought a ticket and literally a half hour at the word camp, he came up to me. And I, I respected that, like, you yeah. know, making it happen type of attitude. He ended up being a, just a great guy, uh, is, you know, that now we communicate on the Internet. So. That's so that's awesome. the key. If Adam doesn't respond to your emails, just go find him in person. Yes. That's all you got to do. And I'm more than happy to spend whatever time with you. I mean, don't show up like in his bedroom at night or something, but go find yeah. him. Yeah, that'd be weird. I have a <laughs> awesome. Well we, yeah. well, we better get to the uh, the subject at hand today. So as Matt kind of talked about, I think uh, all of us, as we come into WordPress, uh, we start with the really easy things and we kind of gradually build some confidence and move on to more and more advanced things. But I think there's like this real big distinction um, where you go from just building a website to building an e-commerce website and you actually have like money on the line and there's taxes and liabilities and a lot more things. So why is it that you think there's this like uh, drastic difference between like a brochure site and an e-commerce site and people being intimidated by kind of making that leap? Well, I think a lot of it goes back to your comfort zone, right? Your comfort zone is I, I can make some pages and some posts and create a menu, uh, copy, upload a logo and the project's done, you know, but the bigger, more profitable projects and, the, and just, just the way the internet's going e-commerce route, it's, you know, entire businesses being conducted on the internet versus uh, in your brick and mortar stores, uh, there's just a little bit more moving parts and there's probably maybe like an apprehension and a fear. Okay. There's all these moving parts and now I've got to learn them all. I have to go through a learning curve if I have to learn new stuff. Uh, but as a web developer or web designer, I think a lot of us naturally have 
a curiosity and a desire to learn and, and kind of have a challenge with things. Uh, but there's just a little bit more moving parts, but that is where the bigger slices of the pie are, you know, moving away and there's less competition as well, uh, moving away from just these simple, basic brochure type of uh, websites that, you know, real easy to crank out. Maybe that's part of it as well. More moving parts means a little bit more work, uh, but it's more profitable work when you're you're uh, doing these things that are outside everyone else's comfort zone. Yeah, not only is there businesses that conduct, you know, like everything they do, all their transactions online, you look at any mom and pop business you w- walk into today and so many of them are are almost forced to the point now where they have to offer some of the things that they sell online or they're just not going to survive. Like people need to be able to do those things from the comfort of their own home. So I think you know, as time goes by, and you mentioned like designers and developers kind of being curious to like learn these new things. If, if you're doing running this business and you're not into uh, learning new things, you're not going to survive here because technology changes way too fast. But, you know, uh, you're going to have lots more opportunities as all these businesses that traditionally have been offline start to move their business, at least portions of it online. So I think there's a lot of like opportunity there. So, you know, I actually got a, uh, an inquiry this morning in my inbox from somebody and I, uh, they said they're having trouble with their website and I went and looked at what they had and it's a Shopify website and I have no experience with Shopify whatsoever. Uh, all the e-commerce stuff I've done is on WooCommerce. So how do you think, um, WordPress stacks up to some of those more like managed, um, e-commerce type platforms like that? Well, I think with any platform, someone's going to have to learn how to use it and manage it. So WooCommerce is the same. Um, Now, Shopify doesn't provide all the flexibilities that you can have with WordPress and WooCommerce, that pair and that combo, combo. There isn't all the same flexibilities. There's also a price difference, but I think if if the shop is going to be like a mega store, a mega online store in terms of products, uh, so thousands of products, it, you know what? The customer or, or per, the person that wants this e-commerce store might just be better off on a Shopify or big commerce. So big commerce is actually might be the better option because big commerce um, you could still have it on your WordPress site, <laughs> but it's actually all the moving parts and the heavy lifting actually happens on Big Commerce's platform. Uh, but you run into the same problems with all platforms. Uh, now, I think um, the the thing with WooCommerce though is you're in control of everything. You know what I mean? Uh, there's so many ways and and things you can add to it to increase sales and all of that very easily that aren't that available on other platforms such as Shopify. Yeah, and I think that's why a lot of probably like this customer that reached out to me, you know, they probably started with Shopify because it is so easy plug and play. Uh, But, you know, eventually most of the people that come to me, at least from these other platforms like Wix and Squarespace and stuff, they come to me because they've hit a wall with those systems, you know? So I think it's, it's probably the same like that, you know, WooCommerce is, it's gotta be one of the biggest like uh, systems within WordPress as far as all the add-ons and things you can do with it. So you think as far as e-commerce goes on WordPress, is, is Woo the option to use? Yeah, but see, it, 100%, yes. Uh, but what ends up happening, and it's the same thing with the brochure website, okay? So you have your brochure type of website, and if you just install your theme and a page builder, you're going to have a very very capable, very easy to manage website experience. But that's not where we end up stopping. And that's where you have to have a little discipline, right? We want to add a plugin for this, a plugin for this, a plugin for this. And next thing you know, you're just adding so much stuff, you complicate it and there's more opportunity for something to happen. And it's the exact same thing with WooCommerce. We have this temptation to add this add-on, this add-on, this add-on, and this add-on when you really don't need it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and when you do that, then you you make it less plug and play. WooCommerce is actually very plug and play. You can add, uh, there's so many themes that support it. You can install WooCommerce. There's an onboarding and uh, jet, you have to nowadays add Jetpack 
Uh, Jetpack will add additional services, but it's all plug and play. It'll add tax calculations for you so you don't have That's to figure out, yeah, how do I set up taxes and how do I do the right rates? You don't have to worry about it. It's plug and play with Jetpack. And the same thing with uh, making sure you're charging the right shipping, printing labels. It's pretty much a a plug and play onboarding experience. And if you just (laughs) stick to that, it's super easy. But then if you install the dozen plugins to add silly things, that's when you get yourself into trouble. You could actually do the same thing on Shopify though. They have apps as well. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's, uh, that's more points of failure. And when one thing fails and you're not sure what it is, that's more hours put in trying to figure that out, you know, disabling plugins, re-able, like, I mean, it, it's a lot of work or it can be. It can be, but you're, you, you're in control of complicating <laughs> the experience or keeping it simple. Right. I have that problem with my own website, right? I log in there and I'm like, why do I have 30 plugins in there? You know, it's just more opportunity for something to go wrong when I probably don't necessarily need it all. I'm actually used to have 50 and now I'm down to 30. I'm trying to get down to 20. Right, right. Um, but it's the same thing with uh, with with WooCommerce. But the only reason I brought that up is because it is, I think, just as plug and play. Uh, as long as you know how to add WordPress install or get a WordPress install spun up, it is pretty plug and play, actually. Yeah. So, you know, I think where some of the complication, at least from my experience, and I'm trying to think back to when I first like installed WooCommerce and thought, okay, where do I even start with this? I think a lot of it that was confusing to me. Uh, was, you know, it's going to add a bunch of pages to your site because it's going to add like a cart page and a checkout page and this page and that page. Um, And then you got to like manage how all these things work together. And what I've kind of found is, I think this goes with anything new you're learning, but trying to learn it in its most simple form first and kind of build up on that, I think makes it a whole lot easier. So are there, is there any kind of like e-commerce store you could uh, suggest starting up at first. So would something like doing a downloadable product or a virtual product, is that going to be easier than doing something like a physical product you got to ship out to people? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, doing something digital is going to be way easier because most digital sales, not all, but a lot of them don't require charging tax. So you remove that kind of moving piece, even though it's all automatically calculated. Um, and uh, then the shipping side of it, which is like the product fulfillment. So right. with digital goods, there's the product fulfillment's automated. Uh, product fulfillment, meaning order comes in, you see the order, it's packaged, shipped, marked as completed and stuff like that. So, um, but all that, that even that process you would have on any e-commerce platform. Uh, but yeah, it's, there is, there is this feeling of uh, overwhelmed because there's things different on the front end. You've got um, in my account page, you know, what's on that my account page? How do I let someone log in? Like with the brochure website, there's not logging in. Uh, there's not all of these pages. There's not an account page. There's a lot of those things you don't, you don't have. You just have pages, posts, and comments. Uh, but with e-commerce, now it's all set up for you. Uh, but yeah, there is that more moving parts because now you got to factor in, okay, how does my sidebars factor into this? You know what I mean? Do I have to have separate sidebar locations and do I have a navigation menu for it and things like that? But it's very easy to put together a WooCommerce site and add a couple digital products, whether they are like an ebook or maybe if you have an online course, something like that, uh, there's all kinds of digital goods that you can uh, offer. You can even use WooCommerce to sell your services. Um, you know, if you had different packages for things that you do or even appointments, you could even use it simply for that. Yeah, you could schedule or, you know, have people buy discovery meetings or care plans or all kinds of things that just work in your own business. And maybe that's where you want to start instead of going directly to client work where you do have like kind of that burden of responsibility. But I mean, even just setting up some things that you normally, if you have some kind of standardized price, you charge people for something, try putting that on your own website first and see how that works, you know? Yeah, yeah I'm meaning to do a tutorial on that, how to sell services using WooCommerce. Um, I, I've got to do that. And someone actually emailed me the other day, uh, can you make that video? <laughs> <laughs> 
So with uh, with talking about like you know how how easy it really is to to put together, and that there really isn't any uh, any reason to be afraid of e-commerce, and especially if you're using your own site as a test bed, you know that way the clients not involved, like you're able to learn at your own pace. Now, once you do learn that, and I I, I know that you're not like actively building client sites anymore, but one of those uh, one of those like real great aspects of an e-commerce site, and you mentioned it previously, is that they're, they're worth a lot more both to you and your client. Um, so like how much more profitable is building an e-commerce site? Well, the, the value proposition to the client is exponentially grateful, right? It's oh, yeah. their entire business. It's what generates the money. When you make a brochure website, it's nice for the business, but they don't usually view that as an essential component to their operation. It's just everyone else has one. I've got to have one. Let's make it look decent. And that's great. I'll take care of it myself. Thank you. I just want you to do it for me. And and, and that's it. Uh, and then there's this perceived of, you know, should uh, it cost more than three or four thousand dollars? No, that's the max I'm going to pay because this doesn't this isn't that as valuable to me and my business. And it's harder to measure that ROI on it you know, when there's oh not my. direct sales. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, but with e-commerce, that's like in their entire business on their website. So the, the importance of that to someone is everything, especially if it's a local business transitioning or trying to have both, uh, you know, and they can feed each other. Uh, so the, the, it, it's, it's what makes them the money you know, and there's, there's such a higher value with it as well. And there's, there's, there's this less of a feeling from a, uh, a web design client that I'm going to manage this thing myself. I'm going to, you know, go and do the updates myself. There's a lot less of that, that bravery in them and they shouldn't, you know what I mean? Even with Shopify, they don't manage it themselves. Usually they have someone there that's overseeing it, not managing it like managing orders. Of course, they've got to do that, but there needs to be someone there regularly overseeing it, making sure the updates happen, the changes happen. So I think it's also a, uh, a lot easier of a sell on a monthly arrangement together. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's very true because how many clients when you hand off a site and they say, no, I don't want to, I don't want to you know, hire you every month to, uh, to maintain the site. How many times do you log in and see that the back end is, it hasn't been updated in two years. And with like any sort of e-commerce that's dangerous. It's not just, you know, an issue as far as functionality goes, but you know, security, you're handling people's credit cards. Like, I mean, it needs to be secure and updated as you know, as frequently as, as it needs to be. Yes. And there's also greater opportunities for add-on sales. A perfect example is, well, anything e-commerce related, there's keeping an eye on the analytics, mm-hmm. you know, making suggestions on how they can improve the conversions. And there's really easy ways to do it that the the, the the person that's hiring you to do this would be like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I didn't even know that was possible. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. And this is actually a plug but for something, but it doesn't cost anything. So <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys are, are familiar or aware yet, but in about a week or a week and a half, I'm releasing uh, – uh, under the cart flows brand, but it's free. Don't worry about it, guys. Um, not selling you anything. It's a. Woo- I'm just about to pay off my six month cart flows plan, so don't <laughs> don't be adding. Yeah. Well, this is this is good. Well, this is um, it's uh, okay. So what we're releasing is a WooCommerce uh, cart recovery tool, and what that means is uh, when you add this, and it's going to be free. It's going to be in the re- repo uh, in about a week or two. This is what happens. So uh, if a buyer goes to the checkout form, puts their name, puts their email in, but then gets cold feet, right? Because anytime a buyer on e-commerce, they're trying to find a reason not to buy the thing, right? right. I know I'm going through that right now. I want to get this new DJI Osmo action camera. And I was on the checkout form 
on DJI's website and I'm trying to find a reason not to buy this, right? In my mind, I'm like, do you really need this? Do you really need this? And then <laughs> anything that could distract me to get off that page, I welcome. So I'm, I'm there and, you know, I'm going to, I'm like, oh, and I don't have to pay sales tax. And I'm going through all this stuff in my mind. And then a phone call comes in, boom, I'm gone. You know what I mean? And I forget all about it. So what this does is it captures that. If, uh, if they put that info in just their name, whatever they filled out, it'll capture it. And then the plugin will allow you to either a push it into your CRM or your email autoresponder or B it can, you can set up an email sequence and there, it comes with one. And that first one is, Hey, were you having some technical uh, difficulties? The next day, an email can go out saying something else the third day. Hey, we want you to get back into that cart. Here's 10% off, you know, and it's only good for 24 hours. So you can, you can um, be more of less of the guy that's uh, building a website and more of the business partner to your clients that's giving them suggestions of ways they can make more money. You're perceived as more of a partner and there's more opportunities to earn money helping people. I, yeah, that's absolutely. Um, so I think at this point, hopefully the, the people listening and watching have realized that it's really, it's nothing to be scared of. You shouldn't be timid that, uh, that you should be able to jump into this fairly, uh, fairly easily. Um, what, what are any like common pitfalls or oversights that somebody that, uh, that's setting up e-commerce for the first or second time might hit? Well, I think if you're setting it up for you or if, or, you, or if you're setting it up for someone else, if you're setting it up for someone else, undercharging, right? And I'm sure that's a constant topic on this show in your community, undercharging. You do not want to undercharge anything. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, because uh, you might bite off more than you can chew and then it's, it's just not good. Uh, good yeah, I think it all goes back to overcomplicating the process. You know, I like what you were saying, uh, you know, where could someone start? You start out with a dozen or two dozen products. It's very simple to do. And just try to put in the least amount of shiny objects into the store because it's really not needed. You just need a, a, a few basic fundamentals. Uh, but like anything, you put your store on good hosting, um, uh, test it out in your local test environment. And especially with e-commerce, you have to have the discipline to not click update immediately. You have to have that discipline there. Well, that's you know, the truth. Right? I mean, you just need it anyway. So, uh, but especially with e-commerce, you have to be a little, it's everything that you have to do just a little bit more carefully uh, and, and intentionally. Yeah. And that, that by nature is going to demand a higher price tag, you know, I mean, Absolutely. It, from, from what you can charge your clients for sure, because they don't want to let their nephew handle that for them. You know, their nephew can handle the little brochure website. And, and I know we've all heard my nephews doing my website, you know, uh, nephews must be the worst, you know, uh, <laughs> But <laughs> I just them. finished a site uh, that the nephew was going to, but uh, never got around to it. So they yeah. decided to hire somebody. Those nephews are unreliable. Um, one one more point that uh, that actually was asked to me recently, and, and Adam, I want to get your insight on this. Is um, so if you're dealing with uh, any kind of e-commerce, an SSL is mandatory. Like you absolutely have to now. There are free SSLs and there are paid SSLs. And if you're running a, a WooCommerce or any sort of e-commerce, is there a difference between a paid SSL and a free SSL? Yeah, okay, I'm gonna give you my uh, raw opinion, okay? It's raw. Do it to it. I think, yeah, I think, well, if you look at what the different levels of SSL certificates are, it's a big scam, guys. Just you know, uh, the free is just as good as the one you have to pay a thousand dollars a year for. The only so what they say is, it's called an EV certificate, right? Right. Uh, you guys have heard this EV certificate. It's hundreds of dollars per year, and they say, yeah, we're gonna 
verify the domain name registered account and it's a real business. That's all that they they claim they do for that extended validation. And then the little padlock, it gets to be like purple in some browsers or green in some browsers. You're literally just paying for that. Now, if you're a banking institution, uh, sure, uh, do that just because maybe someone expects that. But on an e-commerce st- shop, nobody expects that as long as it has an SSL certificate. But what in, in fact happens is the credit card details actually never never really go on your site. They pass through your site to the payment processor. So um, you're not that point of vulnerability or failure. And then the details are never even stored on your site. They're, they're, they go right through you. So if you're using Stripe, it goes right through you. If you're using PayPal, it goes right through you. So um, free is totally fine. But if I was selling something and my shop was making, say, $10 million a year in sales, I'd probably pay two or 300 bucks a year just to get that different color. Right. Yeah. I will say, since you just mentioned payment processors. If you're doing this for the first time, I'd highly recommend start with Stripe. PayPal is a total pain in the ass all the time. <laughs> so just go with Stripe. You can get a free account. It's easy. It's, um, and, and the gateway's easy. The copy, getting it set up is just yes. two little things you copy and paste over. That's easy. It's all really, really easy. Um, once I can't you-, tell you how many times I've set up PayPal and like all the tokens and back and forth and redirect to your site. And every time I'm having to read documentation to do it because it's just too much crap. Oh my gosh. And you can actually, maybe I shouldn't reveal this. We had a little problem on the cart flows website with the recent PayPal gateway update. And, uh, it like took our PayPal off when we did this update you know, so we we have to stay on this older version and you call PayPal and trying to find out what the heck is going on. And they say they just run you around in circles. So, yeah, pay, dealing with PayPal could be very, very frustrating. I probably lost about five hours last week on this issue. Um, uh, that's why they need someone with a care plan. That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad you brought up cart flows because the next thing I had to talk to you about on my list here was cart flow. So. How long has it been since you released Cart Flows? Oh my gosh, guys. We, what is today? The 21st? Yep. Two days ago, we hit the six month anniversary of releasing Cart Flows. And it's been uh, quite a six months. It's been quite a six, mo- six months for sure. No doubt. Well, I think, uh, I think at least the way I understand or kind of see your messaging, and maybe I'm not reading all of it, but the kind of way I see you guys projecting the company is this way to build some more advanced sales funnels using WooCommerce because you can do some more, uh, you can do more things than you could with just their traditional like WooCommerce cart and all this, right? Uh, But what I found using cart flows and it took me, you know, I bought my license when y'all launched. It took me a little while before I started using it, excuse me. And then I've gotten several projects here recently where the client specced cart flows, which was super cool. Oh, but what I've found is setting up e-commerce with cart flows is way easier than without cart flows. So if I was just given the choice, I got to do WooCommerce, do I want to use cart flows or not? It actually makes the entire process so much more simple because you can just set a, you know, here's the page people, the landing page people are going to land on. Here's a checkout page they go to next, or you just put the checkout on the same page and you don't have as many moving parts with it. Um, I actually think that it's a way easier system. Uh, it, while still being advanced, but do you hear people saying that, that how much easier it is for, for them to use it than just a traditional woo setup? Absolutely. So, um, when, when, what we were talking earlier about some of the moving parts with WooCommerce, the back end stuff's easy, right? You just go through the onboarding, connect in your sales tax if it's not a digital good and, and all that kind of stuff. But then the front end is where it becomes overwhelming, right? But kind of cart flows, skips all of that. And so instead of the traditional e-commerce process where you have to make sure there's a shop page and you kind of have to like style it a little bit and make it look good. And if there's one product that doesn't look good and, and then there's all these. Yeah. I think the problem you run into there is because we're so used now to working with page builders that we want 
to just create all those pages with page builders. And there's still some parts of the WooCommerce ecosystem, especially if you're using Elementor, that you have to rely on your theme to do. So now you got to try to build these these pages that your theme is styling to look like the rest of your site you built with a page builder. And it's difficult to do, especially for somebody that's a non-techie like me. <laughs> yeah, because we want to point and click, right? We, yeah. we want to do that. So what Cartflows does for the folks that might not be interested, uh, in, you should all be interested, might not, not, might not be aware of, um, you can actually try Cartflows out right now. Just go to plugins, add new search for Cartflows, in the six months, we have almost any day now to be 5,000 and on 5,000 websites, which is a big deal for six months, new, new, new product and all of that. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big accomplishment. But what it allows you to do, instead of having that shop page and the product page and the, the cart and then the checkout and you can't style any of it, it allows you to create what's called a sales funnel. So you would create... Uh, a sales funnel, it's a series of steps. There could be a landing page talking about the product and all of that and selling the product and the benefits of the product, what's in it for the buyer. Um, and you have full control using your page building tool. It supports just about all of them. And there's even templates. But so they go there and you can optionally then have them go to a checkout page that you can stuff uh, testimonials in, guarantees in, you can do value stacks, or you can just put that checkout page if you want right there on the, the landing page where you're trying to sell the product or the service to, to eliminate unnecessary steps. Exactly. Just like you were saying, you know, you hit that checkout page and you start wondering, uh, do I really need this? Or uh, like, I mean, that's a barrier to entry that you don't have anymore. Exactly. And you, 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 you can use this tool to, to improve your conversions based upon that by giving people reasons. There's a, a tutorial video I am working on putting out and I call it the value stack checkout page. So this is where someone's on that checkout page and they see, okay, I've got to put my name and email and my, my, my payment here. But then off to the side, I'm seeing all of these extra things I'm getting by making this purchase. And it's like, mm. oh, I get that and I get that and I get that. You know, uh, like uh, if you're selling a website service using cart flows, that would be, you know, you're getting this uh, audit report. You're, that's like a $500 value. You're getting this uh, other keyword research and that's like a $1,000 value. And so they see there's a value stack, uh, but you can put anything, testimonials of people with smiley faces that, that had a great experience with the product. You can't really do this with WooCommerce. You can't do this with Shopify, by the way. Shopify has one checkout page. That's it. You can't do anything to it. Uh, but with, with card flows, you can now do whatever you want and have full control over it to, to brand it, make it custom branded. Uh, and then you can also, after the checkout, send them to a custom thank you page where you kind of let them know what's next. Uh, this is something you can't do with any of these e-commerce platforms on their own. Uh, they just send them to some kind of, this is what you bought. Uh, right. which is a total missed opportunity, right? You the, could, the, the thank you page is one of the most undervalued pages on a website. Right. I mean, you could ask for social shares. You could ask for, you can give them directions on what's next. Here's your dashboard or, or here, schedule your call or uh, whatever you want. Uh, you could put that there. You can show them related products that they didn't take you up on and then dynamically discount it. You know what I mean? Hey, you bought this. Why don't you just get right back on in and do a little bit more work there? You know? <laughs> There's all these things that you could do, but see, when you take cart flows and you build these sales funnels, and we didn't even talk about order bumps, uh, upsells and downsells. That's in the pro version of cart flows, but the free version, you 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 don't have that. But that's a great way of getting started. Um, uh, there's just so many things you could do, but that's where if you are um, making an e-commerce site for someone, you're you're now less of the guy that's like the tech geek guy. You're not that guy anymore. You're the con business consultant that has great ideas that makes them more money. You're now more of a partner in their business. Uh, so with the pro version, we have this thing called an order bump. When someone's on the checkout, you can add an additional offer where one little, one little checkbox adds it automatically. And you think, oh, that's silly. I probably wouldn't respond to that. Uh, I don't think that there's much in that. We had a guy 
that added it. He didn't even know how there's this skepticism that will this work for me? And he added a silly $5 order bump and it paid for cart flows within a matter of weeks. Um, and he was like, Oh my gosh, I was surprised that that many people bought my order bump and it wasn't even a thoughtful order bump. You know what I mean? It wasn't something that he put a lot of thought and effort into. So there's lots of uh, things you could do uh, with cart flows, but to get back to the original question, uh, it does make things, it, it puts you more in your wheelhouse. Mm. Uh, the modern web builder, it puts you more in your wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah. just those order bumps. I mean, that's that's akin like to a real life situation when you're standing at the in line at a grocery store and you've got the magazines and the candy. And I mean, that's exactly in a real life situation what those are. I mean, those those are add-ons. Those are order bumps like while you're, you're holding your celery. Or, and or now you go to the gas station to put gas in the car and they want to know, do you want to add this additive? Do you want a free car wash? Do you right. want, you know? million things exactly oh happening to us all the time it, 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 yeah and it's not and it's so natural and normal i was uh, uh restocking my polo shirts the other day and when you're waiting in line you know there's like 10 people in front of you there's this counter there and there's all kinds of things there and i saw these sunglasses and i didn't go there thinking i'd buy sunglasses that day but i'm like hey it's on sale and uh you Sunny know outside. And, i'm yeah. already here <laughs> I'm already I'm already here. I like them. You know, I'm getting a deal on it. So here, let me just grab those. And I ended up spending sixty dollars more for the glasses, but they were probably normally like two hundred, right? <laughs> right. Right. Anyways, uh, but we 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 encounter uh, order bumps in real life all the all the time. It's so natural and organic, and we're drawn to them. We're drawn to the deal. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know a single person that isn't. So I do know you have a, <clears throat> excuse me, a nice full length video on your channel about setting up an e-commerce site, a lot of other types of sites too, but I know there's specifically one about setting up an e-commerce site and it's from start to finish. It's over an hour long, I'm sure. Um, for the purposes of this, I want to kind of talk about what would be the idea if somebody is inspired now, they want to go start an e-commerce site or add e-commerce functionality to their website, um, you know, kind of gathered from the conversation we're having, we're talking about probably start with doing something digital, something downloadable, uh, something virtual, something that it's not a physical product because you add a little bit more to it there. Um, I would certainly recommend sticking cart flows on there because now you can just do it in nice, tidy little pages you make with your page builder and you're not having to worry about going back and forth with your theme. Um, what other kind of tips could we give them to just start out just to get some confidence and get going with the, with the, e-commerce. This is what I would do. Um, I, I recently put out a video on how to create a sales funnel website. So I would watch that, but I would use your local development environment. So for me, I use local. I actually just released a video today on having a local development environment. Just set up some kind of a test staging website and go through that video and do it on your test staging website. But what you need to do is set up a Stripe account, but Stripe allows you to have, um, what is it, the test credentials, sandbox mode or whatever. Yeah. So I think, tokens or whatever. I think, yeah, I think if you set up an e-commerce just for testing purposes, but you put in, and PayPal allows this as well. It's like a test mode. So I think part of the the barrier is, okay, now I'm transferring money back and forth. Just set it up with PayPal and put the little test mode in. So when you make a transaction, uh, it's easier to do it with Stripe, by the way. But when you make a transaction, it's not like a real transaction. So right. you can set it up and then you could log in as the, the visitor and you can see what the flow is like and and you can see what a transaction looks like once it's come in. Uh, then you can see what the email receipt is going to look like and you can experience it. So you're setting it up, so you're experiencing it as the builder, but then you are experiencing it as the buyer. And then I think when you do that, that overwhelm that was up here immediately comes down here because you're like, wow. That was really easy. But I think when you're using like your real Stripe account gateway and it's a real transaction, you got to put a real credit card number in and all of that. It's like this barrier. So honestly, for me, that when, once I started setting up these test environments like that, 
But then the test payment gateway, the overwhelm immediately went down and say, hey, this is actually pretty simple. Now, how do I put my logo in that uh, that that uh, email receipt? And then you can start seeing how to do all these things. But I think that's how you really should get started. Yeah. And once you have those principles down, uh, transitioning from one little digital download product for $5 or whatever you end up going with to having a you know $8,000 product on your site, the setup, the tech, all that, same thing. Like you've already figured it out then. So once you kind of have that confidence and, and figured out how to do that, you can scale that really, really quickly uh, because there's not a whole lot more to learn after that, you know? Yeah, just experience it, how the buyer, just go through the buying experience and, and you can tweak it and figure that out. And you're going to feel so comfortable and confident, guaranteed comfortable and confident uh, uh, doing this. Awesome. And, well, and before- it's free, by the way. Let me just get back yeah. to it. You don't even have to spend a, a penny, right? WooCommerce is free. I do suggest uh, if there's just for the experience, put Jetpack on there. You know, see how Jetpack automatically calculates the tax. If you're going to do physical goods, do a test physical good purchase. You know what I mean? So you can see what the the order fulfillment is and just test all this stuff. You spend two hours and you realize your entire perspective on setting up an e-commerce website. If you just invest two, two, two and a half hours, will pay you back a hundred times more than that. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And, and you're right. There's so many of those things. It looks like you said, Woo's free. You can get the Stripe ad on free. You can sign up for a Stripe account free. I mean, you cart flows is free. Cart flows is free. If you can set up a WordPress install, you can do this entire thing for free and actually start seeing like an ROI from a website in physical real dollars pretty quickly. So it's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. let, let me, let me tell, uh, let me do a plug for something. Okay. Uh, and you can, um, uh, uh, Kyle knows this too. You can, you don't even have to have a physical product to sell. If you want to like test it, like for reals, uh, you could do print on demand. I think you even have a tutorial that you did on print on demand mm -hmm. where yeah. you can like sell these things. Uh, you could sell merch. How cool would it be if you're a website developer and you had a merch store on your website and your customers saw, wow, this guy's got a merch store. This guy's the real deal. He's not some dude working out of his garage. He is the real deal. I would have that perception if I went to your website and I was thinking of hiring you for something and there's a really cool merch store there. Uh, you can even drop ship now. You can literally, I'm going to make a tutorial on this. You can drop ship products from uh, AliExpress. Um, when, when you see how easy it is to do that, it's like, holy cow. When you're scrolling on Facebook and you see like an advertisement for some like really neat product and it's this video ad and you watch it for 30 seconds, 100% that person's drop shipping it to you. Uh, mm -hmm. They're selling it to you on their Shopify or WooCommerce store and it's getting shipped from AliExpress in China. <laughs> yeah. No, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, if you go to theadminbar.com and uh, I think we have something that's listed as like freebies, uh, but we did do a video on how to set up a, a merch store through Printful. Um, their accounts are free and then that all connects directly through WooCommerce and they actually, their plugin extension pulls everything from your store into your uh, WooCommerce stuff. So it's really easy. The, the webinar is like 30 minutes long, but it only takes about five minutes to set up. Um, Awesome. Well, Adam, I appreciate you coming on here with us today. I want to give you the opportunity to tell us what's coming up new with WP Crafter, with cart flows, besides we already talked about the, the cart abandonment thing. What, what can we be expecting from you and keeping an eye out for? Yeah, so uh, WP Crafter, I'm constantly putting out new videos and um, you definitely subscribe and click on the notification bell for that. Uh, I have a lot of fun with it and I'm doing a new segment called Happy Hour uh, where you can submit questions via video and I'll answer them uh, during a live stream called happy hour and I'm going to be drinking. So it might get a little uh, exciting and f or funny or, or embarrassing by the end of that video. But uh, I tested it the other day. I was like passed out after the, the live stream. So <laughs> come have fun for me. I'm planning on doing those on Fridays, uh, but there'll, there'll be a replay for it. Uh, cart flows. We have an exciting update coming out within a week or so. So, uh, 
right now is it kind of goes um, uh, against what we're talking here. It's always been an e-commerce sales funnel builder, but now we're just making it a funnel builder. So you guys have been talking a lot about funnel packs. You'll be able to put your funnel packs in there. And I think Matt is going to make some, uh, the other Matt, the funnel packs, Matt, Matt, right? Davies. Yep. Matt Davies, yes. Uh, he's uh, going to make tutorial videos on putting them in card flows. He said, uh, so uh, now he has to, cause it was on here. Oh, oh good. Man. Exactly. We'll yeah, so, <laughs> so the free version of card flows is just going to be your all purpose funnel builder. And uh, we want people to create lead generation funnels using it and have that structure put in place. That's coming out uh, very I soon. I want to take partial credit for that because when I saw what you're doing with that, I'm like, hey, we don't even need to connect uh, e e-commerce to this. If I could just send these follow-up emails or delivery, like I was thinking, just if somebody wanted to download like a PDF or something, and you have the whole email system set up through the plugin on WordPress, which was super awesome. You got some great ideas, Kyle. We Every um once in a while. Yeah, every once in a while, when, when these good ones come out. Um, so that's a free update that's coming out. Uh, and lastly, we have this free. Uh, we're doing a lot of free stuff, uh, but oh, that's okay because we're giving we're giving back, and I want to support people in that way. We have a a WooCommerce uh, abandoned cart recovery plugin that's going to be full featured, no catches or gotchas, and it even is going to have like a Zapier webhook integration, webhook, but you can put it into Zapier. So uh, it's going to be full featured. There's no catches. There's no gotchas. Uh, that's coming out in about a week. We think that's going to be a huge uh, plugin. But for our Cart Flows Pro users, we have some exciting plans on extending the functionality of it to maybe add some messenger marketing and things along those nature, along the, those lines. So, well, there's always exciting things coming from Adam. There's no doubt about it. So, well, I definitely uh, I appreciate you jumping on the uh, the show with us today. We're excited to have you here, and uh, I'm sure we're going to share this everywhere we possibly can. Uh, and uh, try to merge our audiences together on that. But I will say, and, and Matt reminded me here, we did set up a printful store for the admin bar, but we just hadn't told anybody yet. We do have these, uh, we do have these fancy mugs here. Look at that. <laughs> Those are really cool. The admin we bar. Some pillows that uh, you can see behind icon. me. Yeah. So if you go to the admin bar.com forward slash swag, you can check out all of Matt's awesome descriptions he wrote for these funny <laughs> products. So anyways, no. that's, that's our little plug. I like that mug. Show it again. Show yeah, it again. Yeah. It, it almost looks Gucci, but it's like admin it's, bar Gucci. Yeah, it's all so, the dash icons. Boom. I like Not it. Bad. Not bad. We tried to sneak it in a few Oh, we episodes. got a pillow. Guys, yeah. we have a pillow. A pillow <laughs> is in the room. <laughs> yeah. I got socks too. I wore them to a socks. wedding the other day. Yeah, admin bar socks. Why not? Oh, goodness. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Well, Matt, uh, <laughs> we, we really appreciate you being here with us, Adam, and uh, we hope to have you back on sometime soon. So uh, everybody, I'll make sure to post plenty of links in the show description, uh, you know, to the cart flow stuff, obviously to um, uh, the things we talked about here. And I definitely want to plug like the videos you've done on e-commerce because, I mean, you could literally, I think you said uh, one of your son's friends learned how to build a website from start to finish from a video you did. You can do that with his e-commerce video too, from start to finish. So I want to make sure everybody can check that out. So we got anything else to add before we wrap this up, fellas? Thanks for having me on. Uh, it was actually a lot of fun and I want to come back on again uh, whenever there's an appropriate topic because it was a good time. Absolutely, The, the bar is always open for you, sir. Always open anytime. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way for you to help us is to share the content, subscribe to our channel, use our affiliate links, and now buy our swag. Uh, <laughs> most of that's free. It takes a little time and it greatly helps support the show. So for now, that is all. We'll see you all inside the group. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody.